Welcome to Home Care Matters, the show where we discuss all things home care, with discussions on important age-related matters and topics, brought to you by Enriched Life Home Care Services, the number one rated home care provider in Michigan by Top Rated Local. Hello, and welcome back to All Home Care Matters. If this is your first time visiting us here at the show, thank you for taking time out to be with us today. We appreciate and understand how valuable everyone's time is. And that is why we try and make each episode here at All Home Care Matters something that will hopefully matter to you. We typically talk about things that you should do or say for your loved ones, but on this episode, we're gonna talk about things that you shouldn't do when you're talking with your loved one. As our loved ones age and enter into their senior years, these are supposed to be the golden years and there are happy moments and memorable moments, milestones to be celebrated and fond memories to reminisce about. However, they can also be times of strife and difficulty. Our loved ones can be slowly losing their independence and be left feeling a lack of control for the first time in their lives. It can also be as difficult for their family, their children, and loved ones as they watch and try helping with these changes. Most families, though, aren't prepared when the time comes, and quite often they are left unsure how to approach the situation and talk with their loved one about the issues they are facing. This is normal and understandable. Many times these situations come out of nowhere, or they may seem like some things that have a concern today may not be a concern tomorrow. And we often think mom or dad can handle it. Or maybe they see that dad is having difficulty walking unassisted. And instead of taking talking to dad about it, they decide to talk to mom and express concern. Or maybe they ask mom if everything is okay. And mom, understandably wanting to protect her husband's independence, lets them know that dad is fine and it's just a little arthritis or they assure them that everything is fine because they don't want to alarm their children that they have anything to worry about. It can be a little difficult and tricky getting our parents and our elderly loved ones to acknowledge that there is anything to worry about. This is usually for two reasons. First, they're very private, independent, and they come from a generation of strength and pride. The other reasons that It's most common is they believe they are protecting their kids and family from being worried about them. When there are concerns or you're having a nagging suspicion that something isn't right, your instincts are usually not going to serve you wrong or let you down. We recently did an episode here at All Home Care Matters about how to talk to your parents about needing care when the time comes. But this is about what not to say to your aging parents when you think they may need help or you want to talk to them about help. When the time does come that you need to start thinking about having a conversation with your parents, or if it's an aging loved one that you're concerned about, maybe it's even a neighbor or someone from church who's living alone or has family, but maybe their family isn't local. Remember, it can be a very delicate and personable conversation. And if you already know the loved one enough to know they could be offended or even insulted that you're expressing these concerns, You want to do your best to make it as loving and kind as you can. So we want to share these tips with you about what not to say. Now, when you are first starting the conversation, remember, they may suggest or ask something that may seem irrelevant or even ridiculous. No matter what it is or what they say, do your best not to discount it or to dismiss it. This will almost definitely turn them off to anything else you may want to discuss or talk about, and it may even cost you any chance of having this conversation with them again. If you have a concern about their driving abilities, make sure that you don't say something like, you're too old to drive. For many seniors, their car keys are their sign of independence and control. Think about how long you've been driving. They most likely have been driving for far longer than that. Instead, start with casually mentioning how heavy traffic has been lately or about an accident you recently saw or something that might have been in the news about a bad accident or even the dangerous driving of other drivers. This can subtly lead you to casually mention them, possibly cutting back on the amount of driving that they normally do. Or it may prompt them to talk about an accident they almost had or something you may not be aware of. This is an issue that could require a third party, though, such as their doctor, if you fear for their safety to such a degree that they need to start driving real soon. 
the doctor can also play that role of the bad guy and allow you to express frustration with the doctor for making such a ridiculous decision so that they do not resent you for having their driving privileges restricted. Let the doctor be the bad guy. You want to be on their side, even though you know it's for their best interest, without them blaming you. Now, if you have a loved one who has experienced falls, or maybe they're having a hard time walking, or they have to lean on furniture or other objects just to get from point A to point B, they may need a cane or a walker, or maybe they have one and they don't use it. Don't chastise them and say, you need to use a cane or you need to use a walker. This is because most seniors and the elderly view these assistive devices as something like a scarlet letter. They feel that it identifies them to others as being old or frail, and they will typically refuse to use them unless they can understand there's a reason for it. Now, per Jasmine Marcus, a physical therapist with McCune and Murphy Physical Therapy in Ithaca, New York, Jasmine further goes on to explain that even people in their 80s will say that walkers are for old people and I'm not old yet. This is the problem and something you may know firsthand with your loved ones. These fears, though, can lead seniors to tell their doctors or their families little white lies so that they won't think they need a walker or a cane or some type of assistive device. Or they may even have one, like we said earlier, but conveniently they forget to use it or bring it with them when leaving the house. You can help your loved ones avoid hazards by expressing your concern for their safety and explain you would never want them to have a serious fall or injury. If they don't think this could happen to them, maybe you know of someone or one of their friends that did have a serious fall or injury and explain you don't want to see them end up in that situation. If your loved one is living alone, or maybe their spouse recently passed, and now they are all alone in their home, it's a big adjustment for them and the family. There may be concerns for their safety now that they're living alone, and you want to share your concerns with them. Make sure you don't say you shouldn't live alone anymore. This is a hard thing for seniors and our elderly to hear and accept. They have been living alone and on their own ever since they left their parents' home, and this is one of the first signs of independence as we're growing up. When we first move out of our parents' home, that's the first sign of freedom and having our own place and being able to make our own decisions. Instead of approaching this issue by saying you shouldn't live alone anymore, try approaching it with them as a mutual concern. They may even have a couple of concerns or things that they may be thinking about as you're talking with them. Take an approach of trying to find a solution together. Share with them that you're concerned that if something happened or there was an emergency that nobody would be there to help them. This approach can lead to good solutions and conversation that they can be a part of. They may be open to getting an emergency alert system like Life Alert or one of the other brands. The two of you could speak with one of the neighbors that you trust and maybe have a relationship with already and ask them if they wouldn't mind keeping an eye out and if they feel comfortable maybe even giving them a spare key to the home. Another often forgotten about option is your mailman or mail lady. They come to the home typically six days a week, Monday through Saturday, and odds are they have a routine, and if your loved one maybe waves at them when they come or they greet them at the door or they just come by and maybe the mail's stacking up and notices It hasn't been picked up lately. Ask them just to keep an extra eye out. Explain the situation that you have a few concerns and your mother, your father, or whoever the loved one is, is living alone. And if you notice anything, give them your cell phone number. Most mail delivery people are excellent, excellent people who do keep eyes out for people in their neighborhood that they may have concerns about or if a family's asked them to keep an eye out for. That's a wonderful suggestion that oftentimes isn't thought about, and it's one that you can even do very discreetly without your loved one knowing if you feel like they're going to be offended or embarrassed. Something that is fairly common in older seniors is quite frequently they talk about their health ailments and their doctor's appointments that they have. These are things that you may hear quite often, and it may even seem like you hear on repeat. This requires compassion and patience for sure. One thing that you don't want to say, though, is 
you never feel good, or I've heard that story a hundred times, or yes, I know, how many times are you going to tell me? Or cut them off when they're telling you the same thing today as they told you yesterday. Instead, let them vent and let them know you're sorry that they're in pain or that they have to manage multiple medications or that they have to keep going back to this doctor. But then try to shift the conversation or topic to something positive and uplifting. Maybe one of their grandchildren achieved something at school recently or there's a family event coming up. Doing this helps to turn their attention away from their health and ailments and will hopefully bring them something of joy to talk about. As our loved ones age, it can become more and more difficult and challenging to keep track of all of their appointments and commitments. There will undoubtedly be a missed appointment or a forgotten obligation. Don't chastise them with saying, I can't believe you missed that appointment. This can lead to them losing trust and confidence with confiding in you, and they may not tell you the next time they missed the appointment. Instead, when it does happen, be supportive, be understanding about it, and even let them know that you've missed appointments yourself, and they can call or reschedule. Remain supportive and understanding above all else. These conversations will hopefully be respectful and lead to better communication between you and your loved one, and let them know you're on their side and not looking to take away their independence or take away the little bit of control that they may have left. However, sometimes no matter how hard we try and no matter how respectful and kind we are with our approach and words, it can seem like it doesn't matter. If that does happen and you feel like you're not getting anywhere, it can be helpful to bring in a third party. This can be one of your siblings, a pastor, a lawyer, a doctor, or even one of your loved one's siblings if they're able to, or even one of their close friends. Remember, your heart and efforts are in the right place, and that's making sure your loved ones are safe and can continue living as healthily and independently as possible. If you know someone who may be going through this situation right now and could benefit from this episode, we ask that you please share it with them. We want to try to help families as much as possible. That's what All Home Care Matters is for, is for you. We appreciate you taking time to visit us here and watching and listening to this episode. All Home Care Matters is here for you and to help families as they navigate long-term care issues. Please visit us at allhomecarematters.com. There is a private, secure, fillable form there where you can give us feedback or show ideas or if you have questions. Every form is responded to and read. If you know someone who could benefit from this episode, please share it with them. We hope that you will join us next time on All Home Care Matters where we are going to discuss coping with caregiver burnout. Thank you so much. Thank you for joining us today. We look forward to you joining us again on another episode of Home Care Matters. To learn more about the show and to connect with us, visit us at allhomecarematters.com.